Hello friends, foes, other watchers on the internet, my name is Matt, you're watching Hogwash Gaming, and today we are going to be talking about the Cleveland Gaming Classic 2022. This is my first time going to anything like this, so I figured I would do a little bit of a review to um, let you know how it went, and if you're interested in going, maybe this will help you make up your mind. Spoiler alert, I think you should go. So first things first, I've got to tell you that my experience wasn't your typical experience because I had a few factors that changed things a bit. First off, I had to work that day, so I got there very late in the day. I got there at 6, and it starts at 12 and ends at 10, so the majority of the event was already over when I got there. However, there were a lot of vendors and people shopping there still, so it was one of those things where... I probably could have seen a few more events, but as far as the overall feel, it, it was pretty much the same from what I could tell. Secondly, I had my baby with me, so the, the dynamics were a little different. Uh, she did really great, so, you know, she loves people, so a lot of people was perfect for her, and a lot of people were really engaged by her, too, so I got a little more engagement than you might if you don't bring a baby that is super cute. So now that I've got all of those out of the way, let's start with the basics. Uh, was it easy to get to and was it easy to attend? Well, first off, tickets were super easy to find because I saw this on Facebook and they advertised it very well in my opinion. And um, the ticket uh, purchasing situation was very easy. So uh, I, w I would say that that was very, very good on their part. Um, the center, uh, the, the location, was the IX Center in Cleveland. And they are basically built for conventions. So they have a highway basically just going right off of the main highway, right into the situation where the, uh, the parking is. The parking lot, that's what that's called. Now... Uh, one thing that I found interesting, there were a few things that were interesting. First off, when you're driving towards it, uh, you actually drive past the center. And uh, that, that concerned me because you're just driving straight into what seems to be the airfield for the Cleveland airport. And uh, that, that confused me a bit. But I, I just followed the rest of the cars and the cars were going past the expo center and then it turned and you went through this uh, toll booth kind of situation. And I was told by some friends that had already gone to this location that this is the building that you want to go through. And they had told me that parking was around 10 bucks. Now, I don't know if it's because of the time I showed up or maybe it's like this all day. But there was no one in the toll booth and the gates were wide open. If I was supposed to pay 10 bucks... Uh, that did not happen. I just drove through, followed all the other cars that were driving through, and I found my parking spot. And there was plenty of parking. Uh, once again, don't know if it was because I was so late, but those were some situations that, um, uh, that were there uh, when I showed up. So it was very, very easy for me. Uh, much, much easier than I thought it would be. Uh, get out of the car, put the baby in the carrier, and uh, walk in, got your ticket, scan it, boop, you're in. They give you a hand bracelet thing. And uh, the bracelet actually has a, a code on it that you can scan with your phone. And it gives you a map. I didn't use that. Uh, I, really, I really just wanted to explore and see how intuitive it was. Um, but the map probably would have come in handy if I was looking for something very specific. Um, yeah, I, I did not use that. I probably should have and probably would have if I had gone with other people, but it was just me and baby, so we, we just went with it. Alright, so moving on to the next point, I would say, uh, what was there? What, what, what can you expect? Well, it wasn't as big as I thought it would be. I thought it would be gigantic, like, thousands of vendors. Uh, it was not. It was not that. The main chamber, the main big venue for the Expo Center wasn't half full. What, what they did is they had the upstairs, the main center, 
kind of curtained off and there was enough room for, there was a arcade center kind of thing that I didn't check out because I was here to meet people, not play video games, but if you go to play video games, there are plenty there. Um, and then they had a couple rows of vendors up top. And then they had food trucks, which I didn't buy from because I wasn't really there for food. If I was there any longer, I would probably have hit up the food trucks, but they were there, which was really good because I didn't see any restaurants or anything near the Expo Center. So food trucks were there, that's a good thing. Now, when I say that the, the main chamber wasn't full of vendors, that's kind of misleading because you go down this escalator and there's a underground segment of the Expo Center that was full of vendors and events and cosplayers and photo ops and meet and greets with voice artists. There were also raffles and contests. There was a Brawlhalla kind of table where a guy who was really good at playing a Brawlhalla was challenging people and they were raising money. That way, I, I thought it was a good idea, I just didn't have the time or whatever to hang out and play some Brawlhalla. So, I mentioned vendors before and I'm just going to clarify what those vendors were offering because there was a wide variety of vendors, so I'm just going to give you some percentages, uh, kind of a Venn diagram of um, what these people were offering. Uh, I would say that 70% were selling video games, uh, retro systems, uh, and add-ons. So there was a lot of stuff for obsolete consoles and the consoles themselves. There were um, Sega Genesis, there was NES, SNES, um, GameCube, and then you had Xbox games, PlayStation games. I didn't see PlayStations or Xboxes, the consoles themselves. It might have been because I was so late and they got snatched up real quick, but I didn't see any of those. I saw plenty of the games for them, but uh, and some pretty good prices. Uh, I actually um, got this game for a dollar. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if it's because it's a really bad game, but uh, everything's in there and uh, look like it was in pretty good condition so a buck for Assassin's Creed 3 sure I've never played it before I'll pay a buck for a video game why not and uh, if it's in the Assassin's Creed franchise then you know I, it can't be that bad unless it is that bad but you know who knows they kept making them after that one so yeah I, I'll, I'll give it a shot but anyway really good prices for video games there um, twenty percent of the people that were there, uh, vendors were there, were selling gaming crafts and art and stuff like that. Uh, it might have been a little higher. They they seem to stand out to me more, but upon reflection, I don't remember that many vendors. I just remembered there were like vendors that had just that, and I was like, I don't know if you're actually licensed to sell some of these things, like. Yoshi carpets that they've they've made and you know just uh, like Pokemon themed keychains that they've made you know so a lot of arts and crafts that are gaming themed which is fine uh, I just didn't know if they were licensed to do that if that was legal but they were doing it no one said anything I wasn't interested I'm not I'm not super into tchotchkes and stuff like that but if you are uh, by all means there's they are there now there was one vendor that I remember that was selling hand hand sewn dice bags but I already have bags and so I didn't invest I they had really nice handmade dice sets as well which I thought was really cool too but um, I already have a lot of dice and I was thinking about uh, going around and then coming back thinking about getting some some sets but by the time I got back they were packing up because it was so late a word of warning, it's open till 10. A lot of vendors, I noticed, were packing up at 8. So, uh, yeah, if, if you're going to be late and show up at 8, it won't be great because they're leaving the gate. So other than the crafts and the old video games and the video game consoles, 50% uh, of the vendors were also selling toys and miniatures a lot of Star Wars miniatures um, and a lot of uh, 
Avengers miniatures and and uh, just uh, superhero movie miniatures and toys and stuff like that. Uh, in fact, while I was browsing, one of them said, uh, hey, that baby needs a monkey. And I was like, oh, well, okay. Uh, what are you trying to sell me? And uh, he came out with this guy. And he said, here you go. And my baby looked at it and laughed. And he was like, awesome. Yeah, I knew it. And I was like, uh, okay, how much? And he's like, no, no, she can have it. So she got a free monkey. A little Diddy Kong. Which was very nice of him. And uh, that kind of... Um, leads into something else that I'll get to right after this. 20% um, of the vendors there, maybe even less, were selling board games and card games and the stuff that I usually review. And so I got a few of those. I got um, New York Pizza Delivery, which I will be covering. Um, it's I've just gotten the rules down. Um, I got Turducken, which is kind of, uh, from what I picked up, it's like a munchkin kind of themed kind of thing. It's not munchkin at all, but um, you're just trying to get three birds, a turkey, a chicken, and a duck, and um, you can sabotage your friends who are trying to do the same thing. So uh, I'll take a look at this as well. Uh, I told the guy that I made videos and reviewed games, and he's like, okay, well, if you promise to make a review for it, here's a... Uh, Here's a game that he has in development, so I'm going to do a little review on the game that he has in development, and uh, yeah, it, it looks fun. It's, it's Egyptian themed, looks like. Uh, very, very simple tiles. It's, it's um, pyramids and bricks, and it, he said it's like dominoes meets chess meets something else. Um, I, haven't, I haven't looked into it. Uh, I guess the instructions are this little code down here. So I'll have to look into it, but I was very excited to get this. And um, he was like, oh, and by the way, here's my business cards, which also have a game on the back. So I was pretty excited to um, get these characters and uh, see how the game is played, because it, it has a lot... Um, a lot in common with a type of game that I want to develop in the near future. <laughs> near future being very optimistic. The next thing that I want to talk about is atmosphere. And um, if you haven't picked it up already, this place is extremely warm, inviting, you feel very safe. Um, there were kids there, and uh, kids get in free, at least this year they were. Adults were 18 bucks, and all the kids were free. So, um, you know, a lot of, I saw a lot of kids there. Now, it wasn't like McDonald's Play Place lots of kids, but that, you know, kids were welcome. And that's big if you're a family person. Uh, I, I think that's very important to keep kids in the gaming world. Some games aren't appropriate for kids, and that, that's fine. But uh, it, it, was, it was a safe place for you to bring kids. Um, I... Uh, I already talked about the uh, the Diddy Kong thing where the guy just gave my baby a thing and she loves it by the way and uh, one time I was uh, using my uh, phone to to film the convention I, I wanted to have some b-roll that you've probably already been seeing and um, someone came up to me and said oh you dropped this sir and it turns out when I took my phone out of my pocket I dropped money on the ground and somebody saw it and they ran after me and made sure that I got that back. So just full of good people who uh, really just want to have fun and make sure everyone's safe and I think it was really great. Um, one thing about the atmosphere though, it's very loud. Uh, it's not like you're splittingly loud but it is, you, you have to talk rather loudly to be heard it was just a very busy atmosphere, and, uh, yeah, I never felt unsafe there. And I didn't know what I was getting into, and I never felt unsafe. So I know there's some things that I could touch on more, but, uh, basically I just want to talk about, uh, things I would do next time. Uh, I, I needed to go earlier. Uh, when 7.30 rolled around, even, even 7.30, I know I said 8 o'clock earlier, 7.30 rolled around, people were packing up their stuff. 
And by the time I got there, I'm pretty sure, and I've said this before, everything had been picked over. So showing up earlier would have been better on my situation. So probably get half a day, you know, ask for half the day off or just the day off, just so I can show up a little earlier. There's a premium uh, hour kind of thing where if you pay a little more, then you get to go in... I can't remember if it opened at 12 and you could get in at 11 or if it opened at 1 and you could get in at 12. But there was a premium that you could pay and you could get in earlier to, find, to see the things that uh, the vendors already had up. And um, I, I guess there was like a little behind the scenes VIP kind of stuff that I wasn't going to pay for because I couldn't make it. Um, but... Uh, it, it, I don't know, it's, it's this and that, because I think showing up early, you find the better stuff, but showing up late, vendors are willing to make a deal just so they don't have to pack certain things up. So there's, there's that kind of aspect to it, like something didn't sell well, maybe, so they threw it in the $1 bin, or something like that. So being there late is probably a good thing, and probably being early is a good thing. So I would probably just spend the whole day there. I'd probably, if if I get some games put together before next year, I'd probably open up a booth and be there as a booth. Uh, I think that would be cool. But uh, <laughs> well, that that's that's a, a long way off in my mind right now. But as far as what I would do, uh, I would probably probably show up earlier. Uh, also, I would like to do a little more hobnobbing with game designers that were there. Uh, like I said, this guy, um, he was packing up when I walked up to him, and I could tell from the conversation that we could have talked a lot longer and um, gotten a little more information. Uh, and that's, that's uh, another thing is a lot of people had their business cards. I didn't have any business cards. I, I should, I should get some business cards made up so I can make some connections and get people, you know, interested in the channel and interested in me covering their games. Maybe uh, donating some stuff for some giveaways. I don't know, but yeah, hobnobbing with people in the industry is definitely something that I'm interested in doing, especially if I'm going to be developing my own games. It, it, it's good to know people in that instance. Uh, another thing that I would do next time, bring friends. Uh, I have a bunch of friends that the next day at church, I was like, yeah, I went to this, and they're like, oh, we didn't even know about it. So I would definitely invite friends to come with me. I, I sent it to a few friends, but they live a long way away, and I was trying to tempt them to come and visit, you know. So, anyway, it, it, it was good, and I want to share that experience with them, and, you know, have someone to talk to, like, hey, should I pick up Assassin's Creed 3? And they could be like, yeah, why not? Or maybe they see something that I, I skip over, you know. So having more eyes looking at the stuff and finding good deals and stuff, that's, that's a... A good thing in my opinion as far as what what I will be doing next time because in conclusion I want to go again um, it's it's a I got a great haul for uh, what I spent I spent $61 and uh, I got a bunch of free stuff um, I, you know bring a baby bring a baby you'll get free stuff if you, if you bring a baby I might set up a booth in the future. I don't know if it's going to happen next year because that's 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 an investment not only for spending money on reserving a booth and it's also an investment of having product to hand out and um, to sell. So uh, yeah, yeah, I would go again. Um, I, for my first con, it, it was not confusing. It was not scary. Um, it was just a lot of people who like to have fun and looking for a deal. And yeah, yeah, uh, just a good time. I'm, I'm ranting at this point. So uh, 
Until next time, this is Hogwash, over and out, I'll catch you later.